All right, we're doing the house dovetail. Um, this is a two-part joint. You've got a dovetail to hold the whole thing together and the housed part to bear weight. This is used in a beam type arrangement where you're gonna put a floor on top of it. Uh, stay tuned, lots of mistakes coming. All right, so what you're not seeing on the screen is the drawing, but you can see my measurements here as I go. Um, you see my tools in the background there. So I'll start off on the face for the mortise. Make your marks according to the drawing, and anytime you make a mark, go ahead and square it all the way across the board on every edge and every face. Okay, we've got two different parts of the joint here. You've got the housed part and the dovetail, so we're going to need two different thicknesses. We're at one inch and one and three quarters, and then we're going to square those across. Notice my lines go past the marks, makes kind of a tic-tac-toe shape. Okay, so right there we've got three inches wide and the dovetail part's actually three and a quarter. So I'm gonna go an eighth of an inch over on each side. Um, pay attention, because I'm gonna screw this up in just a minute. Okay, we're gonna use a protractor here. I've made a mark at the vertex. And so you line up on the vertex, make a mark at 75 degrees, and scribe that angle. Okay, it's just kind of off to the side. Right here I'm using my bevel gauge to make that angle on the bevel gauge and then I can transfer it over. Here's where I make a mistake. Remember that mark I made at three and an eighth? Look where I put my angle right there. Boom, three inches. That dovetail's actually too narrow. We'll go back and fix that in a little bit. I'll catch that at the end. I'll be sorry. Same thing here, I'm marking my depth. So I have two different depths. We've got one half inch and three quarters of an inch there. And there we've got our layout. Okay, and I've got, go ahead and mark that on there. On the drill press, set your depth stop to a half an inch. And then start drilling away. Make sure you stay inside the dovetail marks. Don't go past the lines. Also, um, be so much happier if you guys would use a clamp on this one right here. Don't, uh... Don't try to hold that with your hands. Now right there, that's the half inch part. Notice I kind of drilled into the three quarter inch part there. Um, that's not gonna hurt anything except you can't see your lines after that. Okay, go back and reset your depth now to three quarters of an inch, so it stops at three quarters. And continue drilling out the housed part. Uh, right here, I'm gonna, you'll see me re-drilling this at the end. It can actually go all the way to the square edges there. I kept that one inside the dovetail for some reason. Um, I think I was nervous because of the camera or something. Alright, now comes the long, tedious part. You're going to be chiseling and cutting and cutting and chiseling. And I'm using different sizes of chisels here. Just take about a sixteenth of an inch at a time. Um, the soft wood's going to be a pain to work with, but it'll go. I can just sit here and talk and talk and talk over this, or you can watch it or fast forward it, whatever. Um, you do want to leave a little bit of the line showing. Notice I'm kind of using it a, uh, at an angle there just to get some of that material out of the way. Use your bigger chisels to flatten out the bottom. And you can see me, I'm just chasing this thing all over the place. A um, couple of clamps. Those corners are going to be the hardest part. What I finally decided here is to use my Dazuki and establish a nice little angle right there. I'm cutting at an angle so that the top and bottom edges are just sitting at the corners. That just makes the chiseling part easier, then I can chunk out some big chunks right there. And as you're doing this, keep looking back at the drawing so you can see what shape that pocket needs to take. It's really easy to see one line and confuse it and dig either too far or dig into a line that wasn't meant to be cut. discovered there that that's what I was talking about last time. I should have just drilled that part out in the first place. You can also use a smaller Forstner bit and get closer into the corners there. And here we go. More tedium. Just turn up the volume. It sounds like a woodpecker in the background. Really exciting stuff here. give you an idea of how long this takes, most of this video is running at four times speed. So I think this is about 15 minutes when it's done, so that's about an hour to cut that joint. 
And that doesn't count the stuff I did in video. I thought about cutting this out because it's boring, but I just I want you to see just how much of this tedious work there is. Okay. Notice I'm switching chisels, using the bigger chisel to try and get those straight lines nice and straight. so it's not like this long stretch of silence because there's literally, I'm looking at the timeline, like a minute and a half, two minutes of just me chiseling. marks just outside of the dovetail. They're there. I made them. I marked it in the wrong place. So like when you set yours up, I'm pointing to the screen right now but you can't see it. Somewhere I've got a control in this video program I can circle that but you can figure it out. Flatter, you can see the little points from where the uh, Forstner bit was. It's not going to hurt anything. All right, so we've got the female part cut. It's time to cut the ten. Cut the ten in here. Again, I'm making my marks off of the drawing. You want to square all the way around. Do all four sides. Another good thing is if you uh, get around to the fourth side, it should match up to your first line. That's how you know if you're being accurate. Okay, so I'm marking in one eighth of an inch from each end, transferring that, so that gives it that shoulder. And I've got my bevel gauge set at 75 degrees. What we need to do is reset it to 15. So that's the complement of 90. I'm using my bevel gauge to pick up that angle. Now I'm marking it on the board. The advantage of doing this instead of a protractor is you've got the same exact angle on both sides. So even if you're off a little bit, it's consistent both ways. Okay, same as before, we're marking our depths to match. However, we're gonna do a little bit faster method of cutting this guy out here. Okay, again, I'm marking up both sides. I'm gonna be glad I did in just a minute here. I'm also marking on the end. I had another camera, decided not to put that one in here. That was too much work. It is a good idea to put X's on the parts you're cutting out. Notice where the stagger is. And now we're at the bandsaw. Okay, I'm going to cut just slightly outside of the line. And I check that. And uh, yeah, it's out of square. Fortunately, it cut on the waist side. So, retune the bandsaw, get the fence squared, and I'm going to recut this go ahead and finish out my cuts. Yeah, always a good idea to have a tri-square with you so you can check those things. And you can see why I put the uh, put the X's on those so I remember which parts I need to cut out. That last part I'm not going to cut on the bandsaw, the part that's on the table right now. I'm going to use my Dazuki so I can nice, clean, straight cut on that. Alright, 
So all those shoulder cuts I'm not going to do on the bandsaw. Back at the table. <laughs> and I'm looking at the drawing going, crud, what have I done? Oh yeah. Look, there's the marks, they're still on there. So before I start to fit that, pick up that angle again, reset it, remark those, and we're gonna chisel some more. I love chiseling. Chiseling's so much fun. I'm gonna use my Dazuki here and see if I can get that. Should have done that the first time to clean up that edge. And yay for chiseling! Next time I'll do it with some cherry or something that's actually pleasant to work with a chisel. This pine and fir stuff, it just kind of crumbles. That's a brand new sharp chisel too, and it just kind of crumbles under that thing. So we've got that close. Go ahead and use our Dazuki now to cut. I just like the edge that that gives much better than the bandsaw. It doesn't tear the grain. It gets me right exactly on the line. Remember, if you're chasing it across the workbench, you're doing it wrong. This is the part you're going to spend a ton of time. According to my timeline on my computer, it is three minutes and that's running at four times speed. So I spent 12 minutes just fitting this thing. Okay, so what I'm doing there is test fitting it, drawing a line where the tenon fits. actually going to take a little bit off of the tenon. Generally we want to remove from the tenon, but in that case I think my mortise was just a little bit too big. So use the bandsaw, get it close. At this point I'm going to use a rasp I think. Yep, there's the rasp. The problem with using a rasp you can kind of see in that last frame is that uh, it's really easy to get it at an angle. And yeah, remember that drill press at the beginning? Didn't quite get down to the line. And uh, when I look at that, it's about 7 16 7 inch deep. So I gotta punch out another here. No, it's 3 8 of an inch. I gotta punch out a bunch more. So I'm using my drill press with my depth stop set to the correct depth this time. I've got a smaller Forstner bit on there so I can get into those pockets a little bit better. Now we are at a solid half an inch. Time to clean out the corners and fit that sucker in. So at this point, everything's flat, the depths are correct. Problem is those corners just have a little bit of material in at each corner. So I'm getting in, making sure each corner is perfectly square. You can tell that it fits on the edges. What I'm doing is looking for just any little possible spot where it's just not quite right. Again, we're just making minor corrections right now. 
And we are done.